Hey friends, how's it going? So today I'm going to talk about Simplicity Pattern 8579. Uh, it's a pair of stays and penier and some other mystery object. <laughs> Looks like a halter. Didn't matter to me because I'm not using it. I wanted to get through the penier quickly last weekend, so I went ahead and bought the pattern. I figured it was by American Duchess, so probably historically accurate adjacent. Uh, so, and that was good enough for me. I did spend 11 hours making these beignets, which seems like a lot. To be fair, I am slow. There are other reasons it took me 11 hours, which I will cover here today. I do have a notepad with me uh, so that I can remember all the things that I wanted to say. I don't want to um my way through this, so. The first thing is this pattern is made in one piece. It has one piece that has got four times, and that's the entirety of it. So there's another piece. It is um, a measuring device to figure out how long your waist tape should be. I feel like I can figure that on my own, so I didn't, I didn't cut that piece out. Uh, the instructions were clear. They, If you follow the instructions, you will make these panniers, or pocket hoops as they are also called. Uh, there was way more hand sewing than I thought, and there did not need to be that hand sewing involved in this project if things had been done in a different order. There are things that I don't understand why they were done the way they were, didn't make any sense to me. On retrospect, they kind of a little bit make sense to me, but I'll cover some of that in just a minute. Um, I really felt like a lot of it could have gone a lot quicker had we just been able to sew all the things on the machine and then only hand sew when absolutely necessary. Uh, I used <laughs> better materials than they suggested. I used historically accurate stuff like hoop boning in here uh, instead of plastic boning. That actually made the thing harder for me. I used what they had told me to use, it would have been much easier. So I suggest if you're going to use this pattern, do what they tell you to do. And don't think you're his historically accurately smarter than them, because they knew what they were doing when they made this pattern. And it's kind of an expensive pattern. I believe this is $21.95. Even with the Joann's 40% off discount, it's still like $14. I wouldn't pay that. I would only buy this pattern if it, like, again, if it was an emergency, uh, in a $1.99 sale kind of thing. I wouldn't pay $21.98 for it. Let me get into the things that I think that they should have changed in the pattern and the things that I messed up because I think that helps with this. I'm gonna do a little zoom over for you so that you can look at things while I talk to you. The first thing that I think was weird was that they had us hand sew the, the all of four of these edges because uh, they're identical front and back. <sighs> First of all, I'm not good with hand sewing. That's not my forte. I'm really slow. That is part of why it took me 11 hours. Second of all, I don't think it needed to. They've had you put the boning casing on first and then go ahead and put the boning in and then hand sew it with the boning in. And that seems ridiculous. A lot of the hoops I've ever made you just put the boning casing, you hand sew it for, or you machine sew this hem, no problem. Then you put the boning casing on, you throw the boning in, and then you whip stitch the boning casing closed. They also had you do the hem to the outside, uh, which is very strange. I accidentally did it to the inside on one of them. Hopefully I will show you a clip of that. Uh, I don't think it made any darn difference which way you did it, <laughs> and I don't understand why it would be to the outside. I think it actually kind of looks a bit little a little bit unprofessional when it's on the outside. Uh, the other thing I did wrong personally is I used boning casing. I looked at this and I had it's been so long since I've applied boning casing to anything that I sort of forgot that this is not hoop boning casing and <laughs> this is boning casing for a uh, quarter inch like spiral steel boning for corsets. This has nothing to do with boning casing for hoop steel wire. Uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> and I deeply regret that because shoving this wire through this casing was a nightmare and it hurt my hands and made me have to take a week off sewing. So I wouldn't have done that. Would have actually just used the plastic boning or reed boning as they suggested. That cost me the most amount of time besides the hand sewing. The other thing that they have you theoretically hand sew is the waist tape to the body of the penier. I didn't do that, I did it on the machine. 
there's no reason for that. <laughs> you could make it extra tidy, I guess, if you wanted to. This is all going under your clothes. If you can machine sew this, why not do it? So I did do that. So those are things I would have changed. The other things that are just kind of complicated, and I think they have to do with hoop boning, or sorry, pocket hoops in general, um, is you have to get all these tapes tied. It's kind of a nightmare. I would have preferred a way to put them all on one waistband and not have to tie them together in the front here. I mean, I guess you have to to avoid them getting out of control, but maybe just had it be one tie that's permanently attached to each other and all on one waist tape. This is marginally historically accurate, so I can't fault American Dutch for that. This is not their fault for doing that, but for kind of a simplicity pattern, that's a pain. The other thing about these is that you have to get, there are three tapes on the inside uh, of each pannier, um, and you have to get those exactly correct, or as you can see, like these three aren't the same, so this one is like pulling weird. And more importantly, you have to get them the same as each other. So as you can see, these hoops don't have the same, I tried forever, uh, amount of tension on them, so they sit differently on each hip, which obviously is going to cause a problem if I try to put a costume over this, so you have to sort of figure it out and uh, make a decision and probably get it right once and then mark those tapes so you make sure if you ever have to undo them and put them back together that you can get them exactly right. The one thing I will say for this pattern is these go completely flat. They are super light and they are super small. So if you need to pack penne for any reason, these are the ones for you. A lot of people um, that I've been talking to have been saying that they're, they don't care for it because these aren't that impressive, they don't get very big. These are definitely not Marie, Marie Antoinette penne. those are one solid skirt, by the way, and those have a lot of hoop boning in them. They are not simple little things that you just tack on here, so if you're expecting Marie Antoinette, that's not what you're going to get here. These are actually going to be weighed down heavily by your costume. All they're going to do is add a few inches to your hips to make you look a little wider in the side and therefore smaller in the waist. So these are not... <laughs> something that is supposed to be utterly impressive. They are actually very small as far as hoops are concerned. I think that's all I have to say about the pattern itself and my mistakes that I made. I do like these peignets. I'm, I'm happy that I made them. They are going to suit the purpose that they um, were intended for. I'm happy that I bought the pattern that I did when I did and I got to complete them. I'm unhappy about all the mistakes I made personally and there are some things I would have changed about the pattern had I sort of thought about it beforehand, I would have just gone ahead and made those changes. If you're new to sewing and you are thinking about making these peignets, they are not difficult to make, definitely follow the instructions. They do require a lot of hand sewing though. You can get around that if you want to, so just read the, through the instructions, maybe do the hem first and then just whip stitch the end closed of your uh, boning casing. Also, if you don't use hoop boning, if you use plastic boning, there is no reason. I can understand wanting to have a hem, especially one that does go forward and over this end of this hoop right here, if I'm using steel hoop wire. So that does make sense to me. If I was using the plastic boning that they suggested, you don't need that. However, the plastic boning is going to collapse a lot more under your costume. It's going to be a lot easier for it to, to bend and break. These are actually going to be a lot stronger because they are steel and I kind of wanted that. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. I would buy this pattern. I would definitely buy it on a sale where I could get a Simplicity pattern for cheaper than $21.99. I think Simplicity expects you to do that. Joanne Fabrics, if you live in the United States, has these patterns constantly on a 40% off sale, so uh, you can't use a coupon with them, basically, because they exclude sale items on their coupons, which is kind of a sham. Anyway, uh, so if you want this pattern, I definitely would suggest you get it on a sale. <clears throat> it is a completely decent pattern for sure. It's not simple <laughs> simplicity uh, as it looks like it's going to be and it will take you more hours probably than it looks like it should given how simple this actually is. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Have you guys made these? Are you interested in making them? Are there other patterns that you have used for hoop, hoop penne and uh, you would have suggestions on? I would love to hear about those. Uh, these probably won't be the only penny I make in my life. Okay, have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!